So right now we're we're in the second, uh, um, yeah, we're, we're in the public. We're still in the public. We're still in the second part of that picture. We were just uh, seeing. So this is what the uh, this is what the uh, community meetings would uh, look like right here to the left. This picture. Um, we were thinking of doing a. Uh, so we're thinking about doing a game called the traffic light system, uh, where a person the front presents an idea, and the local villagers would. Uh, so support or um, for the idea by showing a green card. If they did not want the idea, they would do a red card. And if they were willing to consider the idea, then maybe uh, have a yellow card in their hand. This picture shows the Chinese ballot. Uh, the Chinese ballot. 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 And then uh, we believe that this process is beneficial because it's empowering for the villagers. Um, it allows them to be involved in the decision-making process and deciding their own futures. And the second reason is that um, they'll make, in, a, in sort of a group setting, 
uh, it makes, I feel like it be, we feel like it will make people more confident in speaking um, because it will be, in the group said it, they won't be afraid of being singled out. So they're more willing to share their opinions. Uh,这种公共参与的过程有两个好处。第一个是让村民们觉得非常有力量、非常有信心的，因为他们决定了他们自己的村子的未来。嗯，同时他们也可以在其中表达自己的意见，这这是一个很重要的过程。And then, uh, lastly, we believe there are uh, specific questions you can ask each actor. So I mentioned the five actors before: the farmer, the government, the planners, uh, and visitors. Uh, so we believe there are specific questions you can be asking them. Uh, for example. Uh, oh, these are all hand drawn by Wonga right here. Uh, so, uh, um, and uh, so, so the questions you can ask the farmers is that you know how do you feel about uh, concentrated spaces? Um, and we understand that uh, a lot of the questions we'd be asking each actor would require more research. We hope that reason our presentation today would be a springboard for more research and scholarly uh, work. 观点是在设计过程中非常重要Coming out of a public process, you don't necessarily know what the end result will be. And in terms of redevelopment of the landscape, there are several possibilities. There's maintaining uh, the existing structure, the wind pond structure. There's a high concentration, as you see in B. Some sort of mix of that that you could see in C or D. The adopted plan selects a structure very similar to C, and that's what we use to evaluate the, the petals of the Living Building Challenge. Okay, this is a image of the adopted plan in the yellow areas we have concentrated development um, along the river at the low end of the slide we have some resorts in the large red areas and then the smaller red areas are more the traditional housing structure uh, Okay, in looking at redevelopment, one of the things we want to take into consideration is the existing um, structure of the landscape and the function that that structure has. This is, it has a lot of ecological function that we feel needs to be further studied that we, one would want to replicate in new design. <laughs> We're looking at a more concentrated structure that supports an ecological function in the village. We're looking at design principles that use passive um, construction for energy, airflow, and water usage. And we're looking at concentrating the in where it's concentrated to create more space for agriculture but maintain the diversity of structure on the landscape. Now, more specifically, looking at the petals, we'll try to go through this very quickly. In terms of site, we're, we're encouraging moving the concentrated developments next to existing infrastructure, such as major roads. And 
In addition, enhancing the, the already extensive passive or, or active transportation infrastructure by making sure there's connections with bike paths and walking trails. Harness as much energy locally as one can um, using renewable energy resources. Create as much as possible as a closed loop system where you harness your waste to generate energy and heat water. Harvest water locally at a sustainable rate and treat locally. Again, this is an example of that. So with regards to health, um, provide access to the natural beauty that's there and maintain the existing uh, bicycle and walking infrastructure. With regards to materials, use as much as possible traditional local materials, recycle those materials as buildings are deconstructed, and also we think there's a place for building an uh, education process, cultural process, of how to use those traditional materials and construction techniques. Connected with that is using the, the vernacular or the, the historical design principles in building. This is just an example of using those design principles in a very modern structure. In addition to the public participation process, to meet the equity pedal, it's important to provide access to public spaces. And we think that a good opportunity there is to, to hire local construction companies and seek activities that build community. With regards to beauty, I mean the existing landscape is beautiful, so you want to maintain as much as possible that characteristic. In addition, we, we think that there's an opportunity for building arts and crafts that create beauty that's reflective of the, the local area. And we feel like there's a lot more research to be done to answer this, and these are a few of the research questions. Uh, understanding what's the optimal size for agricultural efficiency, um, understanding the interaction of ecology and the traditional landscape, um, identifying where the sacred places are and being able to preserve that and respect that. Um, that's it. Okay. Uh, 什么是最最佳最优的方式去提高农业生产效率？什么是呃，就更多的研究要被投入到这个如何保持林盘的这种生态环境，同时有呃生态系统这样的呃一些问题，需要我们更更需要我们更多的努力，就这样。Thank you.